You're watching 7 Action News. Well, as you know, today was the first day in the Kwame Kilpatrick federal corruption trial. When court proceedings were over today, 11 people had made it through. Out of a big pool. Joining us live in our studio to talk more about this and how this trial is going to play out. We've got several guests with us. We've got jury expert Anthony Chambers, attorney Jeffrey Feiger, and Wade State uh, University professor Peter Hanning. Gentlemen, thank you all so much for joining us. So, Mr. Thanks. Chambers, let's start with you in the jury selection pool. I mean, I know there were more than 200 people. We ended up with 11 today at the end of court proceedings, but how important will race play a factor in this jury? I think two African-American women said no way. They didn't want to serve on the jury today, right? There were two African-American women who were excused for cause today. One was a financial hardship. The other one had some issues with regard to faith and making decisions on another individual and thought that she should not only God should judge. So race is going to be a factor. It is absolutely a factor. It's a fact of life and it's going to be a fact in this case. You've got four African-American defendants or three rather African-American defendants. You also have uh, contracts and contractors who are going to come in and say they got contracts and may have received them in part because of the executive order which gives priority to minority contractors. Now, Mr. Feiger, do you use race as, if you're a defense attorney, do you use race as a lever in this case? Well, Kwame, um, his dad, and Bobby Ferguson are live in a city that's primarily black and uh, as you know they're going to be judged by a jury that's going to be primarily white. Um, I don't know how race, using race, is going to help them with a white jury. If I was them and their lawyers, I'd be worried about it. And, and what I'd be doing is using the opportunity that the judge is providing them, uh, which is unusual in federal court, to make a connection with the jury. Well, you know, a lot of judges in federal court won't let the lawyers talk to the jury at all. They conduct the voir dire. That's the selection process themselves, which deprives the lawyers of making this connection. This judge, Judge Edmonds, is doing what I think is the correct thing, allowing the lawyers to question and, and to talk to the juries. That's the golden opportunity for a trial lawyer to make a connection because ultimately, in a case of this length, the defendants will fade into the background and it will be the lawyers out there and the jury will be making a decision between the lawyers and their credibility and their believability and their likability and which team they want to join. I wouldn't be so worried about race. I wouldn't make race a factor with an all-white jury with black defendants. Uh, Professor Henning, maybe you can answer this question. The prosecution wanted this jury pool to remain anonymous throughout. Why, why is that? Well, it, this is a concern that's developed in the federal courts and the state courts over the last few years, and that's with social media, that if the names of the jurors get out there, the concern that's been expressed by judges is that jurors will start to be contacted through Facebook, Twitter, various ways that they can get uh, contacted. Whether that's really a concern, um, it, it's something at least the judges are worried about, and so the idea is that at least if you can limit uh, how much the jurors are out there, then and that's one way that you can protect the jurors. Now, whether it's fair to the defendants, of course, is a very different issue. This has really just developed in the last few years. We've always had anonymous juries. Usually they're in uh, crimes of violence um, where there's some type of threat to the jurors and not so much just social pressure that might be on them. So at some point, courts are going to have to weigh in on this. Mr. Feiger, you said it's going to come down to the attorneys. We want to uh, listen really quickly to what Jim Thomas, this is Kwame Kilpatrick's attorney, said today. Uh, as he was leaving court. I mean, we have we have jurors that are coming forward and they're speaking honestly about what it is that they're thinking and what it is that's going on in their lives and how it is that this trial is going to affect them in the next four months. I mean, that's that's fair, and I think that to the extent that they're expressing themselves, it's uh, it's an appropriate thing. Now, Mr. Mr. Chambers, are they speaking honestly? Are there people who want to be on this trial because they've got an agenda, or are there people who are going to say anything to get off this jury? Well, I think that your expectation is that all of them are speaking honestly. There clearly was one juror today who wants to sit on the jury, and you have to be careful with that, because if a juror wants to sit, you don't know what their motivation is. Is their motivation something that's personal? Do they have an ax to grind with one or the other? But there was one particular juror whose answers just seemed rehearsed. Okay. We call them stealth jurors, and they're usually, by and large, in criminal cases, death deadly. 
for the de criminal defendant. They're stealth jurors, they've got an axe to grind, they've got an agenda, and they lie. And uh, believe me, you can't stop the lying. I mean, the perjury goes on right, left, and center because people don't want to reveal their true feelings. They want to say what other people think they're going to say. The biggest problem, I think, in this case, we just saw Mr. Thomas. Jim's a good friend of mine, but he's already stated that he's had a breakdown in right. his relationship with Kwame Kilpatrick. Kwame says he doesn't trust him. The only way a jury is going to want to come to the aid of Kwame Kilpatrick is to believe that his lawyer loves him so much and wants to save him, too. If the jury believes, as Mr. Thomas said, that he doesn't care, why should they care? If juries aren't invested in the people who are on trial so that they want to save you, you can be as guilty as the day is long, and if they like you, they will save you, and you can be as pure as the driven snow, and if they don't like you, they will send you to prison. Mr. Feiger, before we run out of time here, I want to ask you this. How will the prosecution prove that Kwame Kilpatrick, along with his father, Bobby Ferguson, and this Victor Mercado, ran this criminal enterprise? What did they need to show? I mean, there's such a, a long list of allegations. First of all, they're linear people. They go step by step by step by step. And it, they, they, they follow these things. They're very methodical people. And, and, but ultimately, it, a lot of it is innuendo. A lot of it is is unstated. This is Kwame Kilpatrick. You know he went to prison, he cheated on his wife, the tech scandal, he, he lied about his ability to repay uh, his, uh, his uh, fine. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of it is going to be unstated because they're not, I'm not impressed, I don't care what anybody says, with government attorneys. They're government attorneys for a reason. They get a paycheck every week from the government. It's not a really hard, stressful job. Nobody's going to fire them for not winning a case. And they follow a very methodical path. Now, that's, not a, that, that's, pretty, that's pretty good for them because jurors are tainted from the very beginning. All the jurors believe, more or less, that you had to have done something or you, you would not trial. be there. <laughs> and this presumption of innocence, Americans believe it, totally untrue. Totally untrue. They all believe those defendants did something. Whether they can prove it or not is another thing. All right, Anthony Chambers, Jeffrey Feiger, Professor Henning, thank you so much for joining us this evening. Well, I'd love to talk about this all night long. I'm getting great insight on this, and we hope we can talk to you down the road. Thanks. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. We want you to stay with Action News. The investigators will, of course, continue to follow this trial every single day, and you can find more information and updates on air and online.